Watch them on film, it's not exciting. That's not the feeling you get. Uh, they're very talented. And, uh, you know, from a player's perspective and even from a coach's and fan's perspective, you only, you only get so many opportunities in your career and in your lifetime where your your team's going to host the number one team in the country. It's happened this will be the third time in our history. So, I mean, that's fun for everybody involved. It's exciting for everyone involved. But there's also a reason they're number one. Uh, this is a very, very talented basketball team that's got the – you know they've got they've got a lot of pieces that you need to have if you're going to advance really deep in the tournament. What did you learn about um, the game out there last year? I mean, obviously the environment will be in your favor this time, but I mean just in terms of matching up with them. You know we we played really well the first half. We were able to play with pace. Uh, we were able to force a few turnovers. Um, you know we were we were careful not to get into the teeth of their defense and challenge their shot blockers, and we probably did that a little bit too much the second half. And you have to get there, but then you have to be smart when you when you get there. You have to understand when you can challenge them and when you got to either dribble it out of there or set your feet and pass it and get the ball moving because they're they're an elite shot blocking team. They were good at that last year, and you add Clark to the mix, who's leading the nation in shot blocking, and you get a recipe for disaster in that paint. How unique is the challenge of Hachimura and what he brings to the table on offense? Well, he's he's got a pretty broad skill set. You know, he he can he can shoot a three. You have to at least respect that. But he's he's shown the ability to put it on the floor and score off the dribble. He's making mid range shots, and then he's just a he's a problem in the post. You know, he's so big and so strong, and and can score over either shoulder. And you add Clark to him down there. You know, they don't even have Tilly yet. Uh, you know, when he gets back, it's really going to be. Uh, a problem to, to deal with, but uh, you know he's a hard matchup. Hard matchup trying to guard him small. Hard matchup if you don't have enough quickness on him. So uh, you know hopefully we can we can provide the help that's needed to try to slow him down. What's the biggest What's your message to Creighton fans? Uh, the atmosphere uh, tomorrow of this year. Tomorrow? I mean it's got to be right up there with some of the best we've had. You know you think of. I think back to Marquette on New Year's Eve and Villanova a few years ago and some of the pink out games. I mean, it's it's electric from 10 minutes before the, the starting buzzer sounds. So that's that's what we have to have. That's it's for, it's Gonzaga's first true road game. Uh, obviously, they have a veteran group. Um, uh, so we have to make it as difficult on them as it possibly can. You know, and, and when the fans are into it, when it's loud, it's hard for them to communicate with each other. And, uh, you know, you never know if a couple communication mistakes can be the difference in a close game. So uh, we need our crowd to be not, you know, they have to be participants tomorrow. They can't just be there to watch the game. They really got to participate in it. Last time you guys hosted one, the number one team was Nova. And I feel like Jay Wright, Josh Hart, all those guys were just like, holy crap. That, that was an incredible atmosphere. They, they, I mean, you think back on that game at all, just in terms of what the crowd did, the impact, I know you didn't win it, but the, the impact the crowd had was significant that day. We had a couple whistles the first half that had some impact That's on the crew. Cool. <laughs> Not that I'd forgotten about that or anything, but uh, we had a couple of our dudes sitting over next yeah. to me in the first half that really changed the, the flow of that game. But. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's what it takes. And it, people have said for years, long before I've you know ever been here, since since this arena is open, that you know it, this can be a really, really difficult place to play. And when you have 17, 18,000 seats, I understand it's hard to fill it every night. Uh, but we need to have an environment of a Duke or a Gonzaga where there's 6,000 people there and they're on top of each other. But we've got three times as many people doing that, and I think we'll see something like that tomorrow. What's the biggest thing? Your focal point you have to do to be in it tomorrow have a, have a shot? Well, I think you have to take care of the basketball and, and, and you have to take good shots. And obviously defensively and everything that goes into that is important, but when you take a bad shot, oftentimes that's a long rebound and it's a run out for them. When you turn it over, they're turning those kind of mistakes into points and they're, they're too talented to give them easy baskets. Uh, so our shot selection, our ability, our ball security is gonna be really important tomorrow. Anything that you think has gone that you point to the last four games that has shifted for your team? Uh, that ocean water in the Caymans, I think. I mean, <laughs> it, we just got some of our mojo back. And, you know, sometimes when the ball moves, when guys run the floor and we make the extra pass and you hit a couple shots, 
it's it, it just reaffirms what we've been telling the guys. If this is the way we play, if we'll make the extra pass, the ball will come back to you the next time. Uh, just trust your teammates, trust trust ball movement. And when things start to slow down, make sure the ball moves more, not less. Uh, and we were able to get to that in the Cayman some, and, and there were signs of that again against Montana. I know you've talked about this before, but you, you know, being in the Big East, these types of matchups, when you speak to the big picture of how they're a part of that process when you can face a Gonzaga on December 1. Yeah, you know, we, we play ranked teams all the time in the Big East, and, and that hopefully prepares you for this. But, you know, this is a game that fans started talking to me about, I think, the second day I got the job. We ever thought about scheduling Gonzaga? Well, yeah, we've thought about it, but it, it, it has to be a, a situation that works for both teams. And, and we've worked on it and tried to get it done for years. Uh, and, you know, to finally have it done, two Jesuit schools, uh, basketball is really important on both campuses. R fan bases are really into uh, their team, not just locally, but nationally. We have Creighton fans all over the country that are supporting our team, and the Zags, I'm sure, will have some people there tomorrow that, that really support them. So uh, to have this game to come together, I think, is great for college basketball. It's great for our fan base. Add to the fact that when it finally happens, they're number one in the country, and I think it just adds a little fuel to the fire. Is this something that... Uh you guys can add to in the future in terms of this series? Yeah, you know, we'd love to do it, but again, it, you know, Coach Few has to be in agreement with sure. that, so uh, he's a tough guy to track down sometimes in the summertime. He's catching fish somewhere while I'm on the golf course, so uh, those schedules don't exactly match up when we have to talk, but he's... Uh, uh, it's it's yeah, it's it's the type of game we we you know we we try to play two home and homes in addition to our game with Nebraska and our exempt event and our feeling is that's giving you seven really quality games and you test your team away from home and then you add to that the Gavit game so you know we're playing a very competitive schedule and in some ways probably this year a little too competitive for as young as our team is. For that young team that's grown as much as you have so far, how important is a chance to kind of gauge? You know, we're going to find out a lot. You know, Gonzaga's the type of team that's going to expose your weaknesses. And, and you know, the, and there's really nothing you can do about it. You know, so they're, they're that good. They're that experienced in the guard court. And they're that ta the talented across the front line. So uh, if there's a weakness, it's going to be glaring tomorrow. And, and it's our job as coaches to try to put our guys in a position to be successful and try to hide some of those shortcomings that we know that we have and then try to play to our strengths. And that's playing with pace and getting that ball moving and, and try to get them in rotations and see if we can't wear them out as the game goes on. Coach, uh, the last yeah. afternoon game you guys had at home at Eastern Tennessee State, a slow start. It took till the end of the second half to finally get things going. What will it take to avoid a slow start with this 1 p.m. start time? Uh, I, I don't know that the start time had anything to do with it. East Tennessee State certainly had something to do with it. I think they're 8-2 and two now. Uh, so they're, they're a good basketball team, and they were well prepared, and we were still trying to find ourselves. But uh, I, I don't think the start of the start time of the game has anything to do with it. We'll go through our normal routine uh, tomorrow morning, and uh, you know, hopefully we can get some baskets and get a few stops early in that game. What's your sleep schedule like tonight? Not very good. It hasn't been very good since I turned on the Gonzaga tape after that Montana game the other night. I mean, as exciting as it is, you're just trying to figure out ways to uh, put your team in a, a position to have a chance. And, uh, you know, they just do not have a lot of weaknesses on either end of the floor. And uh, they played a very competitive schedule uh, so far. So uh, it's, it's a difficult one to prepare for, but that's what, that's what makes what we do fun. Thanks. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, What's up? How are you feeling, man? Obviously, you know, this last this last game for you, I think, you know, just kind of being more aggressive and feeling more maybe like yourself. What, what was the, the approach there for you, you know, going into that Montana game? Uh, just practicing harder, uh, doing the movements I used to do, maybe look back a little bit to what I was doing, uh, get back to the things I, I, was, I learned and then forgot about them and then keep doing them. Obviously, you know, the front court play for you guys this week, you know, on Saturday will be huge. Uh, what's what's the expectation for yourself and, and for you guys, you know, you big guys, uh, knowing the task at hand here? Man? Yeah, they will try to go uh, inside early, that's for sure. Uh, they got good guys down underneath. Um, we're just going to have to match their toughness and uh, try to just try to defend them. What's the excitement level like for you guys knowing this? I mean, obviously, Coach said he was terrified that you were looking past this game, which you guys didn't, obviously. But I mean, this is you know, this is what you what you play for, right? Chance at the number one team in the country. Yeah, we didn't look past the Montana game. That was obviously the first game. It was it was on the schedule, but uh, 
Every every time someone mentioned the Gonzaga game, we got goosebumps. You know, seeing them being ranked number first, uh, it's just something special. What about you know the, you know you guys have seen these big time environments before uh, at Creighton? How how much help is it to be at home? You know, and have that crowd support behind you when you play a good team. Yeah, that's every game. I mean, the crowd is going to be our sixth man. Uh, I'm excited. It's gonna be. It's gonna be crowded. It's gonna be rowdy. So they're definitely gonna help us win this game. Martin, who in their lineup concerns you? Lineup? Say that again, please. Who, who concerns you in their lineup when, uh, when they're out there on the court? Who impresses you? Mm -hmm. They have a lot of uh, good shooters. They have. Uh, they have a couple guys that are in the mock draft for next year. So they're potentially good NBA players. Uh, I'm. I think Rui Hachimura is, is a pretty good player that we're going to have to focus on a little bit more and uh, not let other shooters get it going so we can stop them. Did you watch the Kansas game and uh, the Duke game that they played? Um, did you watch all of that game? Yes, of course. What stood out in that game when you watched it? Uh, just the toughness. The, those Both teams are tough and they run a lot. Um, we're just going to have to outrun them, outmatch their, you know, toughness and we're going to have a pretty good game plan for them too. Well, uh, obviously, you got kind of big game tomorrow. Uh, what's, what's the excitement level like for you guys? I mean, you always try to treat one like the other, but yep. this one's got a little bit more trouble than you. It's exciting. Uh, they're the number one team in the country. Uh, it's pretty much like a rematch game from last year. We just got to pretty much just come in here with uh, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of heart, and just come out here and just play Blue Jay basketball. When you think about you know, the task that you've seen from those guys in the front court, and rebounding will be big for you guys as a team. How do you collectively you know, make an effort to get on the glass as much as you can? Uh, pretty much, we just have to, we all as a team just have to come in with a rebounding mentality and get out fast as possible so we can score. Uh, we. We worked on it a lot during practice tomorrow, working on it a lot today, and pretty much just see how it goes on tomorrow. What is it about you know, your game this year, but, but some of your teammates as well? You know, the shooting efficiency has been really good. I mean, I think you guys had what, five and double figures the other day, and everybody took between five and ten shots. Uh, nobody's jacking at 20, points to get 20, or 20 shots to get 20. Yep. I mean, what, what is it about this offense that allows you guys to do that and be successful? Uh, pretty much we play as a team and uh, we know everybody knows, like everybody on the team knows their job and what they have to do. Uh, we all come in, we all have to do what we have to do to sit and get out of win. We get up a lot of shots every single day no matter what it takes and it just mostly pays off. We, we play as a team, we do everything as a team and we just come down and we get wins. What, uh, you know, when you think about the, for you personally, obviously, your role, you're kind of trying to learn a little bit about you know how you guys fit into this team mm -hmm. early in the season. What have you learned about yourself and where these guys fit in? Uh, pretty much like as knowing that myself, as I know I'm a young sophomore, but I still had to come in and uh, do everything like I'm an upperclassman kinda. Uh, I have to come in and sit there, speak as a voice. Uh, Tell the freshman or like ask the freshman like do you get what I'm, like coach is saying like do you need some help showing them around and stuff, but uh, pretty much like I, we rely on like Teeny Davion and mostly like the upper classmen to sit there and tell us what to do and it also relies on us to sit there and show like and tell them what to do as well. So it's pretty good. Can you speak to the kind of opportunity this presents for for you and your group? You know, still early in the season to have number one coming in. Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, number one, in the, um, they're number one in the uh, NCAA, and obviously they're a very good team. But pretty much, we just can't sit there and let that stop us from doing what we need to do to sit there and come and get this win. What has Coach McDermott keyed in on in your preparation thus far for Gonzaga? Uh, pretty much, it's just nonstop rebounding and making sure we set up in the paint because they're at least shot blocking team. Uh, but uh, in the inside game, it'll come. We just got to sit there, like, make sure like everybody knows their job and everybody knows what they have to do, and everything is just going to pay off in the long, long run. Since the Ohio State loss, what would you say is the biggest thing that has led you guys to clicking? And, and did you guys come together at all after that loss that you know, maybe led you on this four-game winning streak since? Yeah, uh, we sat there and just told each other, like, we looked at the film, we looked at all the things that we did wrong during that game, and pretty much we came, went down to the Cayman Islands, did what we had to do to sit there and get a win, 
do everything like we just talk we just mostly just talk with each other and we just know everything about each other so uh, after that loss we looked at it we focused on what we need to do coming in and practice and we did what we had to do and it's just it's great thanks thanks, thanks. 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 thanks.